week flew by. Two two days of driving, Monday and Friday. I have some notes and I have some pictures from the drive and miscellaneous that I'll post uh, on this vlog. I um, I'm going to do some research today. I worked on the house yesterday. I got home Friday night. Worked on the house yesterday. Found some things out about the electrical that make may explain some things but I'm going to do some research today if I get done early enough I'll go over and put some glass in a broken out window or two but otherwise uh, I'm going to research today and try and relax a little bit because I have to go to work for a week and then spend the weekend back over at the house and drive down next Sunday back to North Carolina for three weeks I thought it was two it's almost three it's like uh, we leave Wednesday or Thursday of that third week so the bad news is I don't have renters for this house that I thought I had. Uh, financially, that sucks. It's not the end of the world, but it's it would have been nice. Um, but the upside is it gives me time with all this training to get the house that I'm moving into correct. And I've got friends helping me, thank goodness. And um, it also gives, uh, gives me time to do some things to the house I'm in right now before I have renters so that it's the way I want it for renters. Um, so I'm not trying to patch it. I can actually fix a couple of small things like uh, replace a section of linoleum that's not quite right, um, redo the stairway, uh, and sand a couple of floors, and put new thresholds in where they're needed. So with that in mind, um, that's the good news. And so I'm going to focus on that. I'm not going to worry about the fact, because in the area I'm in, there is, uh, for rentals, there's less than a uh, 2%, um, is it 2% or 4%, it doesn't matter, it's, there's a really high rental, uh, almost all the rental properties are full, and it's a matter of the few that aren't are really, really high priced for what you get. Um, I think some of the properties that are renting are high priced for what they get, but uh, that's what that's not you know it's not either neither here nor there um, but I'm gonna do that going to see what I can do uh, I might look and see what this house would bring on the market um, just to see what what my uh, realtor thinks because if it's enough I might go ahead and sell it if I can actually sell it uh, but I'm not gonna take a big loss on it and I'm not gonna do a short sale or anything like that so that being said um, that's what's going on. In my, my life is all about houses right now. I have been working out when I'm at, down at training, so I've got three weeks coming up where I'm going to train really hard because uh, that'll probably be some of the last really hard training I get uh, before April to step up my game for the uh, Spartan race, which is, you know, I mean, it's almost the end of January now, so that puts it at three months away. Um, that's only 12 weeks. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's like, yeah, I think it's 12 weeks, well, I think it's 13 weeks right now. So, I mean, it's not that far away, um, which, of course, I'll have video and pictures of. So, uh, got to train for that, train for it, train for it, train for it. Um, but I can only do that when uh, when I have time to do it, when I'm not working on houses. Because this week, every evening after work, I'll be working on a house, either this one or the other one. And tonight, I'll be working, if I don't go to the other house, I'll be working on this house. So, I mean, that's, that's my life right now uh, for the next at least month and possibly two uh, with a big move in the middle so yeah it's gonna be um, interesting and I think I'm gonna I mean it's all attitude too so it'll be fun it's just a matter of making it happen so alright well that's my week check out the notes I forget what's all in there I think there's some cooking in there for Gail a friend of mine online who uh, who was talking about needing to know how to cook kale Gail needs to cook kale so uh, hopefully those will help out anybody who wants some quick cooking ideas because all my stuff on the road is one pot for the most part with a few exceptions uh, because I don't have a full kitchen when I'm standing in extended stays which is where I've been staying. Uh, remember that I love you people. I really do. So um, have a virtual hug. <clears throat> there you go. Okay, I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, I'm on the road. It's Monday morning, headed towards Raleigh, or actually Cary, North Carolina. If you are twice as excited as I am about it, you're still not very excited. Uh, I've got about an eight and a half hour drive ahead of me, and uh, i got to make sure I get a workout in this evening. Just uh, after sitting in the car all day, it's going to suck. 
So, that's the plan. Get into the hotel, get a workout in, uh, high intensity interval training. Uh, uh, I might glance at Body Rock to see what they did for the day. Uh, BodyRock.tv. And um, we'll see what goes on. I may talk to you before then just because eight hours is a long, boring drive. And if I think of something that I am most impressed about myself with. <laughs> Okay, if I think of something I think is interesting enough to talk about, let's go that route, uh, I will uh, probably st stop back in to say something, and otherwise I'll probably see you at my workout tonight. As you can see, I've hit a fog bank going through West Virginia, and it's uh, it's slow going. So I just thought I'd show you what I'm driving through. <clears throat> okay, you can see here. Whoa, maybe you can. Oh, the steam. Okay. What I have here is I have some chicken breast, boneless, skinless, and a nonstick skillet with some red pepper. Or, yeah, crushed red pepper, black pepper, salt, garlic powder, and red onion. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to add the kale. I'm going to pile it on top. Now I've already removed the spine from this fresh kale. You can also get the kale in a bag that's chopped. You can just throw that in there. But this will cook way down, so I stack it in there. As you'll be able to see here in just a moment. And I stack it in there. Now, I'm not at home, so I don't have my normal utensils, but we're going to take that. I've got some water here that I brought that I brought up as hot as I could get up while I was waiting. And we're going to pour in that hot water should. Oops, so I'm just going to the side. That hot water, we'll steam it. That's what we're really trying to do is steam it. Now, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. If I can get it all in here, because we got a hot, hot. So we got to get it all inside. And just stomp it down. But it'll all cook way down and it'll look okay and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit. Okay, this is what it should look like basically when I get done with it. Um, it's you can see it looks like the kale is kind of wilted and steamed and that all that kale cooked down like that. So you, know, you need a big pile of it. I'm gonna have a, a nice serving of it. It'll be yummy and uh, that's how you do it. Put this up just for you, Gail, so hopefully it'll help you cook some kale. Kale cooked by Gail. <laughs> Alright, talk to you later. Okay, what I have so far is I've got uh, a no-stick skillet. I'm heating it up, and I've got uh, no-stick spray in there. Now, if I was at home, and I have a few more ingredients and a few more utensils, I would probably use just like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, if I wanted to get crazy, of olive oil um, or coconut oil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add Brussels sprouts that I've chopped up. These are fresh Brussels sprouts. They've been chopped up. I'm also going to put in a little bit of uh, red onion there. And once that gets nice and hot and starts cooking up a little bit, we're going to add a few other things. Um, but right away, I am going to add some coarse salt. The kind of coarse salt I have is iodine, iodide, or io, iodized, excuse me, um, so that you get your iodine, which is what they do to table salt to make sure that we get iodine and uh, a little bit of black pepper because I pretty much put salt and black pepper on everything so oh and listen I don't know if you can hear it but I hear my hotel neighbor's dog so anyway that's where we're going to start I'm going to let that heat up I'm going to cover it up I'm going to let it heat up and then when it gets heat heated up we'll be right back and we'll show you what we do next Okay, you can kind of see here, you can hear it, it's actually starting to saute. With a little olive oil, it be a little better saute. But it's getting a little brown on it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add about a half cup of water. Make sure that heat is way up, So, because we want to actually start to steam it a little bit. 
and I'm going to add at this point a little bit of sliced garlic. If you add the garlic too soon, you'll actually cook it out. Um, you just won't get the flavor from it. So once I'm to this point, it's a good time to add the garlic. Uh, and we might add just a little pinch more salt to make sure that we've got enough to deal with that water. And um, really, if I was at home, I might add, um, instead of water, I might add a half cup of red wine. Or, uh, well, yeah, it'd probably be what it would be was a half cup of red wine. You can even get crazy if you want to add a little um, heavier or a little sweeter flavor, maybe like a stout beer, a uh, half cup, quarter cup of stout beer mixed with some water. That would also do. Uh, but we're going to let this cook until they're done now, and um, they should actually coat a little bit after they sweat, and um, we should have a nice, a nice uh, dish of Brussels sprouts that are not boiled too mush. All right, I'll check back with you when they're finished. Okay, now it's uh, the water's pretty much cooked off, and these are done. Uh, they're tender, but not overcooked. Uh, they'll be nice and tender and delicious. And so those are uh, Brussels sprouts, the the fun way or the tasty way that I think. Anyway, so that's what I got for you. I'm going to cook fish here shortly. Uh, with my limitation of utensils, though, I'm going to have to wash this skillet and reuse it. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now we're back with the fish. <clears throat> this is, I don't even pretend like I know how to pronounce the name of it. It's SWAI. I've got it on a high heat. It was frozen, so even though I got most of the moisture out, it's probably going to pop up with a lot more. Uh, so we're going to let that moisture cook off. Uh, start with like I always do. Salt. And then some pepper. And remember again, I am cooking in a hotel room. An extended stay hotel room, so I don't quite have the access to all this access to all the stuff that I would at home. But this will still turn out to be pretty good. Now, I like uh, want to make this a spicy fish because I'm also going to do some other stuff with it. So I'm also going to put in some crushed red pepper. Cook in there, yeah. So, we're cooking at a relatively high heat, and actually it's on high right now. I'll turn it down. Um, maybe like a medium high on electric. What we're going to end up doing is letting that cook a little bit, get some of that moisture off. And then I'm going to add some uh, fresh spinach and then some, uh, maybe some fresh kale. Uh, from the bag, the bag kind, which is already chopped. And then you can open it there. And that way I'll get some nice uh, greens in there to go with uh, everything else. And you can see this fish is starting to cook up, at least get nice and white there. I'm going to go ahead and flip it just so we get some heat on the other side. And then uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the green stuff, put a lid over it, and let it steam the, uh, the moisture from the fish, actually, because it's not a very strong fish at all. Um, very, very mild. But, uh, all that will let uh, steam down the vegetables, which will cook way down because they're green and they'll add their own moisture. So first I'll put some of this baby spinach in there. to uh, quite a bit in there because I like spinach and it will, like I said, this will cook way down. Um, and of course spinach and kale both are full of vitamins and nutrients and good stuff but more importantly, at least to me, they taste good. They have lots of flavor. That doesn't look so good with that one. And uh, I'm going to kale here. Now kale actually is better, or has a, a better flavor after the first frost. So if you're growing kale, which I hope to do next year, it's supposed to be best, its best flavor is after it has frosted the first time. It's supposedly a hardy plant and uh, that's what they say. So um, now on top of this, because I know how this goes, 
Uh, the green stuff will absorb or kill a lot of what I've already put in there for salt. Now it looks like I'm putting, it may look like I'm putting a lot of salt in there, but I'm really not. I've put in a total of about both the fish and that is a little over a teaspoon of salt. Uh, I'm also going to add some more pepper though, because again, we're doing the spicy thing, so we make sure it has plenty of seasoning. And uh, put that on there. We're going to let that cook down, and then we'll uh, we'll be back when it's done. So here's what dinner looks like tonight. <clears throat> Even though I'm in a hotel room, I try to do something nice. Um, put the candle. We've got uh, Guinness General Guinness Generous Ale. We've got the fish, the greens, and the Brussels sprouts. That's got lots of protein, lots of nutrients, and uh, that is a lot of food. But it's, it's uh, I don't even know what the calorie count is. I'll put it in before I'm done, but that's what it should look like. All right. I hope that helps. I'll talk to you later.